Hello all, I'm Sai and you're watching The Book Dragon. In today's video, I'm bringing to you 10 fantasy books for beginners. If you've been following me for quite a while now, you definitely know that I read all sorts of genres when it comes to books, but fantasy is my most favorite genre. After I made my 15 books for beginners video, many of you guys wanted me to do a separate video for fantasy books alone. So I'm doing this video today in which I'll be recommending you 10 different fantasy books, all of which are really easy to read and suitable for any kind of beginner. And there is this one thing about fantasy books is that they are always part of a series mostly. So all the books that I'm recommending today are mostly part of a series. There are also some standalones which I'm recommending. In order to make it easier for beginners, I've chosen to recommend books that are only parts of either trilogies or duologies. So you can find standalone fantasy books, duologies as well as trilogies in this one. So if you do not want to commit to read a really big series, you need not worry at all. All of these books are part of smaller series and they are very much suitable for beginners. So without any further ado, let's get into the books right away. The first book that I'm recommending today is Caraval by Stephanie Garber. This is the first book in the Caraval trilogy. The second book is Legendary and the third and final book is Finale. I've read only the first book and I've not continued on with the series for two years now. But I should say, the time I read this book, I enjoyed it the most. Now, this book deals with the story of two sisters named Carlet and Tella. And there's this particular kind of carnival called Carnival. It is like a menagerie or a magic show that is happening in different places of this magical world during each and every year. And in order to go and visit Carnival, you just cannot barge in there or pay and get in. You have to get the invitation from the maker of the show called Legend. And what happens is Scarlet is this a person who has wanted to go and visit Carnival for quite a few years now. And she's to be married right now in this year. That is the time during which she gets the invitation for Carnival. Since she's to be married, she's not allowed to go to Carnival. But her sister does not want to give it up. She wants her elder sister to go and visit Carnival because that is kind of lifetime dream for her. So they end up going to Carnival and many mysterious things unfold. It is a really well written book. The prose in this one is gorgeous as well as the sibling dynamic that we see between the two sisters is really well written. The magic is not so tough but the world is so beautiful so it will be definitely very much suitable for beginners. The next one is Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. This is also the first book in a trilogy called the Legacy of the Orisha trilogy. It is an African inspired fantasy so all the characters in this book are black and I should say the cast of characters in this one is really huge for a young adult book but also the book is very huge though the book is pretty big in size and there are a lot of pages. It is really fast paced. The characters, main four characters in this one are also quite well written if you ask me. We have two sibling dynamics. Now the plot of this book is that uh, the group of magicians in this world called the Orisha, they've been uh, controlled and subjugated by the king and a whole generation of these people have been massacred and the further generation of them are being domesticated so much that their magic cannot be revealed further on. This is done by the king who is ruling right now and in order to bring back the magic, our main character Zeli, she goes on a quest and she is joined by the crown prince as well as the crown princess of the kingdom and many things unfold. It is a bit of a violent book but I'm sure if you've read the Sharon Bone trilogy or if you did like any of the Grisha books, you will like this a lot because the magic system in this one is very similar to that of the Shadow and Bone trilogy. The next one is a historical fantasy trilogy and it is The Infernal Devices by Cassandra Clare. I am not recommending the Mortal Instruments because of two reasons. The first reason is that the number of books in the Mortal Instruments is higher. It has six books. And the second one is that the first book in the Mortal Instruments is a bit boring. So I would not recommend it directly for any beginner. But you, if you get past the first book, the series just gets better and better towards the end. But in this one, it's not like that. Even from the first book itself, you'll be very well gripped and this happens in 1878 London. We deal with the story of a girl named Tessa Gray who moves from New York to London in order to find her brother. But what happens when she ends in London is that she is kidnapped by some downworlders because of some power that she has. And after being kidnapped, she is rescued by the Shadowhunters and her power as well as her story starts revealing from then on. It is basically just a love triangle but other than just the romance, this series has a lot many other layers put into it and I'm sure that if you start reading this one, you will not be able to put it down at all. And also, the final book in the series will be very much rewarding as you continue on with the series. And I'm definitely sure that it is very much recommendable for any beginner. Next one is This Savage Song by Victoria Schwab. Now, this is the first book in a duology called the Monsters of Verity duology. The second book is Art Dark Duet. I read the first book and I loved it a lot. And the second book I picked up after a very long gap. So I was not able to remember most of the things that happened in the first book. But I should definitely say the concept of the series itself is very intriguing. The duology takes place in the city called Verity. And the thing about Verity is that it has three different types of monsters called Korsai, Malkai and Sunai. How these monsters are born is a really peculiar type of thing that is specific to this duology alone. Any act that harms some people or causes some bad to happen in a locality gives rise to these monsters okay for example if uh, there's a bomb blast which happens uh, due to that many lives 
might have uh, gone in a particular place right so the sorrow or the badness caused due to this incident all transforms into this huge monster and as i said before there are three types of monsters corsai malkai and sonai they feed upon human beings in different ways and in order to control these monsters there is this particular person uh, in our story we have the daughter of this person and a sonai monster getting acquainted with each other and it is a really well written story if you are a person who does like a bit dark kind of fantasy you can definitely try this one the next one is a stand alone and it is heartless by marissa meyer now this is the retelling for the back story of the queen of hearts who's the antagonist of alice in wonderland the special thing about this book is that the author has used all the original elements from alice in wonderland that is the creatures and the things that are a part of the original story of Alice in Wonderland and she has incorporated all those elements in the back story of the Queen of Hearts. Basically, we just see how the Queen of Hearts lived the life before she got married to the King of Hearts and what are the events that actually shaped her to be the cruel, loath, ruthless and icy person that we see in Alice in Wonderland. It is a really well written story. Also, the prose in this one is also very, very gorgeous. It is simple to read. You can just breeze through the book continuously. The perfect way I can describe to read this book it is like uh, eating cotton candy okay it is not at all tough but it is very sweet and towards the end it just feels like very light and it also has a huge punch because of the dark element which is the center of the story the next one is the only adult book that i've added in this and it is also a standalone i'm talking about war breaker by brandon sanderson in this one also we follow two sisters named vena and siri and they are part of a small kingdom and there is this huge kingdom called idris in which gods reside and the king of that kingdom is actually a god king. In order to stop some wars in between this kingdom and the god king's kingdom, the elder daughter Vivana is to be married off to the god king. But because of some turn of events, what happens is Siri, who's actually kind of a tomboy character, she is married to the god king and Vivana is kept inside the kingdom itself. Now, Vivana is the person who was actually trained in order to become the wife of the god king for all these years, whereas Siri was just left free to be. Because of this twist of events, we see both the sisters ending up in places where they are not supposed to end up and uh, the elder sister again goes and tries to help her younger sister her plot is kind of a quest apart from this we also have this thief called vasher who has his own storyline progressing on also the magic system in this one is really cool i'm sure that it will take a bit of time to understand and go on with the magic system but i'm definitely sure that it is something which is very interesting to read we also have this very sassy god character called light song who insanely humorous and i'm sure that every dialogue that light song says punches a lot of humor always so even though it's an adult book and is so even though it is an adult book and it is very huge i'm sure that it is suitable for beginners because of the way in which brandon sanderson has written the book the next one wonder woman warbringer by lee bardugo this is the first book in the dc icon series but the special thing about this series is that you can read all the books in the series in any order and they are not at all connected to each other they are just like companion novels but they are standalones the story of the story from one book does not affect the story in other books in any way at all now in this one we see the backstory or the origin story of wonder woman who's diana when she is a 17 year old but the story of this the story of wonder woman that we see in this one is very different from that which we have seen in the movies so far for example uh, the love interest of Diana in the movies is Steve Trevor right but in this one we don't have a love interest at all for Diana we just have a friend whom she ends up helping called Alia. The best part about this entire book is the amount of time Lee Bardugo spends in explaining Temesquira which is the island in which the Amazons live and what is the connection of all the Amazons who live in the Mesquira and what are their limitations and what are their superpowers. Apart from many other things the costume of Wonder Woman is given a huge importance in this one because the costume that Wonder Woman wears is not about the glamour it's about the power that she exhibits and what a symbol she is for all the superheroes out there i'm definitely sure that there's no other female superhero who's more famous and more liked by everyone other than wonder woman and the reasons for all those things are really well put together in this one and i'm very much sure that it is definitely suitable for beginners the next one is a middle grade series and this is the biggest series that i'm recommending in this list and it is the chronicles of narnia by c.s lewis now i've read only the first two books of all the seven books in the series and i should say this very much beginner friendly because of the fact that it is middle grade and also it is portal fantasy which is a type of fantasy in which we open a door or we open this portal and we are transported into this different uh, world in which magic exists and everything is very fantastic and all the fantastical elements that are very specific to fantasy books are shown in that different world it is insanely suitable for children as well as adults at the same time who want to get into fantasy because the writing is super sweet and super easy and all the books are very convenient okay you need not think a lot it just goes with the flow and i think the edition that i have here is also a bit illustrated in black and white i'm recommending this series despite the number of books in it mainly because of the reason that 
all the books are really short i think they are just 250 pages long and they are so fun to read and very fast paced so it'll be definitely suitable for beginners next we have northern lights by philip pullman this is the first book in the his dark materials trilogy the second book is the subtle knife and the third one is the amber spyglass so it's just a trilogy and you can easily go on to the other books also the special thing about this series is that it is suitable for every age range so from middle grade to adults i'm sure anyone can read these books because they are easy for children to read at the same time they are not childish for adults to read so anyone from any age range can read these books and enjoy them because they are complex at the same time they are easy i don't know how the author managed doing such a great job of putting all those things together and i also think this is the reason why this book series is being adapted in many media in many times i so definitely if you are a person who's trying to read a fantasy book as a beginner at the same time you want it to be a bit sophisticated and complex go for this because it is very enjoyable and so easy to read at last i want to recommend this because uh, it is between young adult and adult so that's the reason why i put it at last i'm talking about a quote of thompson roses by sir j mass now there are currently five books out in the series and i've read only the first two books the first one is so mediocre but the second book is really good but if you ask me it's not a young adult book the second book is totally an adult book because of some content that it has but despite the romance and sexy things that we have in the series it also has a very beautiful laid out world and the way in which sarajee mas actually progresses this plot and makes different characters interact with each other and some clashes that we get between main characters in the books are really well written our protagonist in this one is a bit boring and one dimensional if you ask me but apart from the flaws which i said this is definitely something which is very suitable for beginners because it will make you flip the pages and read continuously also it is very atmospheric okay while you read the books it just feels like you are in that place of fay and that's the feel that the books give so definitely if you do like very well immersive books i'm sure that you will like these a lot so yes guys those are the 10 books that i recommend for beginners in fantasy and if you did find this video useful and interesting in some way or the other don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also share it to your friends if you want to get more content from me do subscribe to the channel because i publish new videos every tuesday thursday and saturday thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day